Thank you. So part of why I told him not to worry about pronouncing my name is it's very handy if there's ever a deep fake video uh, of someone in my family saying that they want money. Uh, if they know how to pronounce my last name, I know it's someone who actually knows me um, and who, who is related to me. So yeah, it's so wonderful to be here to see so many people. Um, it feels like a lot of old and new friends. Um, so what I'm going to tell you a story today that starts in January 2023 at Reeker Center. After my batch finished, I was talking with my friend Mary, Mary McGrath, if you want to know who ultimately to, to blame for what happened afterwards. Um, they did tell me I could share their full name. So thank you, Mary. Um, and we were talking about one of the curious things that you see in Python sometimes, which is the use of exceptions in ways that you would not expect in other languages like Java or C++, where they're just for things that you don't expect to happen. Um, and to show what I'm talking about specifically in Python, I feel like we should just look at an example. So something that you sometimes will want to do is check if a string is an integer or not. And in Python, we would want a function signature that asks, is this an integer? Takes in a string, returns a Boolean. So if you give it the string one, that should say true. If you give it just a letter like A, it should say false. And if you give it one A, that should also say false. What do we have inside of it? We have exceptions. We just try it. If it fails, it's, a, it's not an integer. But if it succeeds, it is. And this is kind of delightful and horrifying at the same time. Um, so naturally, we asked the question, how far could you take exceptions? And we were just musing about, like, could you have a whole programming language where like you replace constructs with it. What could you get rid of? Um, and as the Beatles taught us, all you need is exceptions. Um, and so I took it way too far, like I do with very, very many things, and I made the programming language Perl. I did upload my slides with a captioner because so many people mishear me as the programming language Perl. Um, so if you see the programming language Perl with a P, that's Hurl. Um, if you see Hurl with an H, it's probably this one. Um, and like all super serious languages, it has a documentation site. You can find it at hurl.wtf. Um, it has a standard library to do some of the things that you're going to need to do for any practical language, string manipulation, things like that has a few licenses, including a custom license. Um, and we offer commercial licensing, see me after. And it has a code formatter, so you can maintain a consistent style um, when you're using this in production environments. So how does Hurl work? I'm going to give you a little whirlwind. You can, of course, find more on the repository or on the docs site. You have three main features that make this language work. You have variables. Uh, you have functions, which are all anonymous, and you have exceptions, which you can throw and catch. As the Beatles told us, this is all we need. So in Hurl, your variables are dynamically typed. You can reassign to them. Um, so you can create a string, then use the same variable name for a number. It doesn't matter. It's all good. It's dynamically typed. Maybe as a principal choice, maybe just because that was a lot easier for me to implement. Uh, you also have functions. And all functions, like I said, are anonymous. But because we have variables, you can bind them to a name. And because I also was lazy and I did dynamic name resolution instead of doing it at, 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 at parse time, you can recurse with that. This is regrettable if anyone actually wants to make a very, very, very deep patch to this to remove the ability to do anonymous functions. I would love that, because I wanted you to have to pass the function into itself to recurse. Uh, but whatever. So you can write a function like this that will just recurse until you hit the stack depth and stack overflow, and that will tell you what the depth of your stack is. Very useful. We need to know this. Um, and then you can do the normal things. You have arithmetic, so you can get stuff done for your production calculations, string concatenation. You can also include other files. So if you have mischief in this one, you can include your mischief. But you can include whatever you want. So you can pass in an, uh, any expression as long as it forms a string. That's what we're going to look for on the disk. So you can construct dynamic includes at runtime. Um, and I had kind of been trying to avoid it. I guess I do have to talk about it. But yeah, exceptions. There are two forms of exceptions. Um, you can hurl an ex ex exception, which is what you expect. 
kind of the usual, you throw it, it destroys stack frames as it unwinds the stack as you go, and then you have tossing an expression, which is totally extra, but it's there because it was really a cute idea. And what it lets you do is it walks the stack, keeping all the stack frames, and then if you use the return keyword, which we all know and love, to do what it actually sounds like it's doing, which is going back to where you came from, you return, uh, then the tossed exception will go back to where you tossed it from, and you'll keep executing from there. And there are three ways you can handle it. You can catch a literal value like one or true. You can catch as a local identifier to make a new local variable or catch into an existing variable. So now we have some examples. This is a Python program you, many of you are probably familiar with, print hello world. It's also syntactically valid hurl. Um, for something with more interesting logic, we can greet attendees. Imagine that we form this variable some other way. It's not just hard-coded. Then we can hurl whether or not you attended BangBangCon and catch true or false and greet you appropriately. You can count to 10. So what you would do here is you have a recursive function and each iteration you pass it in. Eventually you catch the literal for your base case. That's how you stop recursion. And you would print something like ready or not, here I come. I've been playing hide and go seek with my kids. Um, now we'll look at a working example. This is our standard in Python for factorial. It has a base case of um, n equals zero, and then you have your recursive step, and then you'll print it out. So we can actually mechanically translate this into hurl. It all converts pretty, pretty easily. First we define our function, then we define our base case, which since we don't have returning out of functions the normal way, we have to hurl out of the function and then catch it as the return result. And then when we recurse, um, we will, um, so, so for the, for the, we have a catch false and then inside that we will create our variable, recurse to calculate the next step, hurl that out and eventually print it out. So, you can dive deep into that, as I know all of you will, because this is a lovely language. But the, the, the point is that we can translate any Python program into this, and it generalizes over any computation you want to do. So we have standard library. In standard library, I actually implemented if else, because it was kind of annoying to not have it. But you can implement it in terms of just exceptions um, and play more like loops. Then you also have the custom licenses like I talked about. So you have the commercial one that's pay me bags of money, which would be hilarious, and I hope no one does because you really should not actually do this in production. Um, you have the AGPL because, yeah, let's keep software free. Um, and you also have the gay agenda license, which um, I, I think I'm going to give Mindy uh, a partial blame on this one. Um, but you have to say be gay, do crime at least once while using the software or you lose your license. And if you ever do something that uh, impinges on LGBTQ rights, you irrevocably lose your license. Um, Hurl does have some limitations because no language is perfect. Um, the call stack size obviously is limited by your operating system. Um, and since I did a, a tree walk interpreter, I don't have a way around that. There are bugs in the interpreter, especially with toss, which is embarrassing because that was kind of cute and extra and it has a lot of bugs. Um, and it's really painful to debug and profile, but none of it matters because hurl is a useful language. And you probably don't agree with me right now, but the point is that it's about joy and learning and silliness and connection and like, I don't know that I would be talking to all of you right now if I hadn't made this silly, ridiculous language and I get to meet so many cool people. So now we're just gonna take a hard pivot and talk about my workshop. Um, I also do woodworking. Some of you have asked me about my keyboard setup and I made it out there. This is my workshop when I had a, th that's a coat rack I just made, finished making for my kids. In the picture you can see my workbench, which I made myself. Um, I've also made sawhorses that I use and I've made a lot of sleds and jigs, some of which also were useful in making that, um, that coat rack. But I can't make my chisels, I can't make my saws, the vacuums, power tools I use, things like that. As programmers, we're in a really special position because we can make all of our own tools. Um, and so we build everything, programming languages, OSs, debuggers, editors, browsers, even our conferences. And so I learned a lot from building Hurl. Like parser errors make a lot more sense to me now. I have a different way of thinking about code and appreciate normal control flow a lot more. And appreciate a lot of my friends who are along for this really weird, wild ride. And silliness is freeing because mistakes can be an aesthetic. So go forth, be swift, make more silly things, especially so I can make more sentences out of just programming language names. And thank you so much. If you haven't hurled yet,
You can find me on my blog or Mastodon or my newsletter.